So, hi everyone, thank you for watching. Today I'm with renowned professional artist Patrick Killian, who has carved a unique niche for himself with his amazing portraits of combat sports professionals, as well as pop icons, wildlife, and a range of other subjects. And today we're going to be having a chat about uh, Patrick's life, his career, his creativity, uh, and a few things like that. So, thank you all for watching. So, um, Patrick, th like I said, thank you for um, taking the time to have a chat with me, by the way. I, I do appreciate that because I know you're very, well, very... Thanks busy. for that introduction, mate. That was very, uh, that was very nice of you. Uh, well, like I say, it's a little something because obviously a lot of people watching this will know you, but um, I'm anticipating there'll be some that don't. Um, so, obviously, you know, it'll be their sort of first, first introduction to you and your work. So, um, well, that's the reason for sort of dropping that in. I mean, you know, one of the um, first questions that I actually had was um, sort of follows on from that, really. Is in, obviously, you've painted some massive, massive names um, in boxing and in, in other areas as well. And again, I mean, a lot of people will know that, but I think it's a good place to start. Some of the names that, um, that you've painted over time, do you have like a personal, um, personal favourite or um, it, maybe there's more than one? Or let's, let's sort of start there. Do you mean uh, who I like to paint? Personal yeah. favourites? Yeah, or yeah, I would say. I'd, that, have, I'd have to say, I, I'd have to say a favourite would be Tyson, especially Tyson and especially Ali, to paint them because you never, especially Ali, you 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 never. Um, there's always some inspirational thing, and funny you should say that because there is an Ali one that I want to capture. A moment I want to capture is when he first won the. The title and he's screaming in front of the and, and, and I haven't got to do that yet but um, there's so many different ones you come across um, of the fighters and you might see like an image of their, their facial image or something and you think oh that would be great as a painting or like a montage you know um, yeah I never get I never get bored mate of, of, of doing those types of and it, and it not not just especially Fury now as well. I see Fury, and the funny thing is they're all heavyweights. But that um, that's not a that's just just how it is. It's just I think there's a lot. I, I gotta be honest. There's a lot of fighters. There's there's one behind there of it's, I don't know if it's reversed on your what well, you can see there, right? But it's Lomachenko um, yeah. after they beat Martinez. It's just a, like a quick sketch. Um, but when there's moments like that, Liam. I love, I love just, it, this inspires me then, you know, when I see something um, that really inspires me and think, oh, I want to capture that, you know, I want to capture that in paint and see you, what sort of style I can do it in, you yeah, know? Absolutely. Which obviously does lead me to an interesting thing. I mean, you obviously capture um, an amazing likeness of the people that you paint. Now, I know that's, what I mean by that is I'm talking about deeper than the surface. I mean, you, you capture like the sort of emotional... Um, energy of, of you know certain moments in time and things like that I mean how do you sort of do that in terms of I know boxing is a massive passion of yours and I know obviously you've got your, your boxing background but I mean in terms of the creative um, process do you do a lot of it from uh, purely from imagination from memory um, from I mean how do you sort of translate that sort of amazing like I saw one you did the other well fairly recently I saw one of, of Tyson um, yeah. where he put his hands up in the air and he's winning and, and you can just sort of feel it from the from the, the picture yeah how do you sort of create that effect well I think there's a you know it's it is a couple of different things really right because if I see I often see something on a, it might be on a film I might see like different images um, so I, I, I try to utilize those reference materials to, to come up with my own thing and the, the one you just said and about the Tyson one um, the of him coming in to the ring on that throne was just epic and, and even before the victory I sort of had that plan in my mind of that of that what a painting I would be because obviously he's known as the gypsy king and then coming in as the king on the throne I thought that was great you know and I thought what a what a shot that would be of him coming in and then so he was even thinking of this painting as as, as he was coming in and I was over there as well mind um, and then together victory as well was a bonus and to see him lifting his hand and I sort of had this composition in my mind straight away 
and it's actually on easel so it's funny you should mention it but um so this uh this is the piece i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this around oh, i can't actually I, I don't think we can turn it around but let me just take this off here a minute because you, yeah, you let's I, have a I don't know if i can turn it around on my i don't know if i I can turn my screen around. Um, actually, I think I can. So this is the correct way. Then it's still it's still a work in progress, man. Because I'm still trying to get. Now that top image there is. I actually paused. I still the uh, the the camera that as it was a film. I I paused it as it was as he was coming in. I really like that image of him because I like that glare. You know that glare, intense glare of him coming in, and the yeah. throne in the background, and then the victory. But I really specifically like the fact that him and his brother. I, I really like that, you know, with Shane. Yeah. And the and the, and, the, and the composition goes well because of the, you know, you've got him there coming in the throne, but then we've got this scrolling up the side there, which I think works really well. So that that's what I'm actually, work, I've been working on that for a while, but obviously off and on. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not been um, yeah, You know something, I mean, I'm not just saying, but you know something, I mean, even when uh, I've seen some of your works a number of times, they, they always, it's like you can sort of look at them time and time again and still see something new, do you know what I mean? It's, um, that's one sure, of the things. Thanks. Uh, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, there's one, obviously, it's a little off topic, this, but there's one in, uh, obviously, in St. Joe's Gym of Lee Selby. And I, I'm oh, off, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm often in that gym doing yeah. photography and doing different things. And I see it time and time again, but you can almost, it's still sometimes like you've seen it for the first time, and it's just it's just an effect you create. Nice of me, I appreciate it, thanks. Well, it's nice know. to have that as well. It's nice to have that effect on, you know, I think that sometimes I do it. It's funny, because sometimes when I haven't seen something for a while as well, it's nice for me, mind, to walk into that gym and to see that, and to even, even myself as the artist, will walk up to that painting and look at it quite closely and think, "Oh yeah, I, I did it, I did it like that," or I, 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 I put, you know, quite thick, um, quite thick paint on different areas, and it's quite, it's quite interesting for me to see it and the style I did it in. Um, and that's the other thing as well, mind. I mean, there's many different styles that I have and. Sometimes it de depends how I feel and what sort of thing I'm trying to portray with it, you know. Like yeah. that one behind us there, the one of the one of Lomachenko is very, um, very sketchy, very painterly, very colourful. But um, the one I'm doing now of Fury is obviously more realistic. But um, you know, I still got a, and the one the one at the end of um, Bernard Hopkins, even though it's backwards. Um, you know, there's there's a, a bit of contemporary sort of abstract feel to it with the lines and stuff. Yeah. But you know, and I and I don't like everything I do. It's funny because I'll do stuff and I think you know I like it and I don't like it and then somebody will see it and they'll love it. Yeah. You know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, they say. So, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a funny it's a funny old thing, really. It is. And that does lead me actually, actually, Patrick, to something else, because I was going to ask you about your use of colour, because, you know, um, your use of colour in certain pictures, um, I think, it, I think it's amazing. I mean, it has a real vibrancy. But I mean, that leads me to a bigger question, is actually where I'm going with this, of the actual creative flow. I mean, when you're going to sit down and sort of work on a on a painting. I mean, do you sort of plan out? The reason I bring this in is obviously you obviously you've got a boxing background, so you're a very successful amateur. So there's sort of a discipline and a routine and things like that. Do you apply that to your painting of you know I'm going to paint at this time and, and accomplish this much, or does it just is it sort of as and when as when the spa? You know how does the creative I, I, you flow? know it's it's a it's a funny one because you know I got commissions that I need to complete, and then the funny thing is if if I'm inspired to do something, which I have been lately with especially with the UFC starting back up. And I, you know, it's not a massive thing of my thing, the UFC, but, um, you know, I started doing something completely different. I was doing a lot of pen sketches with a, with a, with some high, white highlights and, and it's very effective. And, um, I just was inspired to, to do them. Um, I think because the fights were on and there was a lot of media attention about them. So I, I, I wanted to capture them, you know, Justin Gaethy was the most recent one and, and Rose and Amajunas. Um, but, but the process, I would certainly say it's more of a spontaneous thing because if I, honestly, if I could, it could be two in the morning 
and I might be tired, and then all of a sudden I think, oh, you know what, I really fancy starting that, and um, I just started and worked for a few hours. Um, other times then, I might I might not be in the, and it was difficult through through the COVID thing, you know. I wouldn't say I totally lost um, my creative side, but I certainly lost a little bit of in, uh, inspiration because a lot of the times inspiration is from the traveling side of it, thinking that, oh, that event's coming up. I'm going to do a piece for that and exhibit the piece. So that, that's gone um, for the meantime. But um, this, for instance, this has been on the easel for a while, to be honest with you, but there's been bits in between um, that, have, that have come up. But, but as I said, the, the creative process for this piece was in my mind on the night of that fight. You know, it was great that he got the win because it was, it was instant. As soon as I seen him coming in on that, on that throne, I thought, what a, what a unique um, portrait of, uh, of, of, of the Gypsy King, because he's known as the Gypsy King. And um, I thought, what a, what, a, what a way to capture it. And what I even like about this, I'm going to turn this back around as well, because um, I think it's quite, I think I've mentioned it before, but what I like about this, we got we got the king. Look, that's actually a bit of light reflecting there. We got the we got the king. What I noticed as well then, right, was when I painted him after the win, is that obviously it's Gypsy King, but it's cut off the other side. is cut off. But I quite like that the fact that it's got King on his shorts. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So um, it really uh, works with the piece. Um, how did I come up with the, the comedy? I sort of knew what I was going to do. Sometimes I'll do sketches, especially if it's a um, if it's a montage of various uh, ones. I'll, I'll certainly do a quick plan of of that, you know, to see if the composition works. Um, and I'll and I'll play around with that, you know. I'll play around with in something, put in something there, and something to the left, something to the right. Does it work better on the other side? Um, I'll play around with that with little thumbnail sketches or even just messing around. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very much uh, how I feel sometimes, you know? Yeah, it's an interesting insight into it. Um, you know, and that's the reason I ask because it's, you don't always get that insight into it just from looking at the, obviously yeah. the product. So it's, it's a good, and that leads me to something else that, that basically it fascinates me to no end really is that you um obviously paint live uh, as i understand and you sort of um you know that's something that you do i mean in terms of that process um i, I think it's, it's quite amazing to be able to do something like that i mean i've seen i've only seen a few people do it i mean my mother is an artist as well uh, just a uh, very talented creative and she can do that but i've only seen it a handful of times and it's an incredible process just to you know watch a painting well watch a you know a blank canvas transform into this amazing but in terms of yeah. the process of live painting you know people watching people being around and, and and that sort of it's almost got that performance edge how do you find that i mean it's not really one question but i'm just i'm fascinated by well the, you know. I, I per personally for me i love it because what it does it's not necessarily you know i might not i might very rarely I, I well actually never i never i wouldn't say i ever finished the piece um on that on that particular moment because there's always something I, I, I want to add to it and and, I, and I'm in a different vibe as well when I'm in a oh, I mean, Alexa is uh, reminding me something do you know what she just said then oh what she say she said use your reminder you need to work <laughs> oh, that's always a good reminder isn't it uh, keep you on track um, what I was saying what was I saying then about, You're saying you don't always um, finish one at that particular moment. No, right? no, I don't. So you know, unless, unless it was being an auction, but um, very often, to be honest, I'm, I'm there as a. I think it's a great thing to, for for the public to meet the artist. I love it, right? Because I have so many people <clears throat> coming up to me, New York, <clears throat> uh, Vegas. I have people coming up saying, "Oh, Killian, I, I follow you on," and it's lovely for me to have that because. I don't, I don't, I don't um, expect that. I don't, you know, expect somebody to come up to me and say, oh, I follow you on Instagram. And, and it's such a nice um, thing when they do that. And um, and even when, especially like in New York, I've, I've exhibited a few times, I've painted live in the, uh, 
the Stewart Hotel, which is opposite. I got a really good relationship with them, right opposite Madison Square Garden. And I often paint live there. Well, it won't be for a while, I don't think. But they, um, they've been great. And what's beautiful about that place is that the fighters will often stop and have a chat and, and um, you know, and talk to me about the piece I'm working on. And Teofimo Lopez is, was uh, really uh, nice in that, in that respect and stopping and chatting and um, taking... And even in, even in um, New York, when I was doing the live Tyson piece, he was going to see Tyson. And um, he even stopped and he even gave me a shout out. And um, so he's a really nice, nice guy in that, in that, in that uh, sense. But I love it, and that's you know that's what that's what it gives me. It gives me that bit of thing with the public where they wouldn't have that very often, you know, especially with an artist. A lot of most artists are behind closed doors. They're in the gallery. They, um, you know, they. You don't really have that one-to-one interaction with them. Um, so I, it's, that's partly why I do it, and they, you know, get my get myself out there more as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's excellent, as you say. I mean, it's, it's something that you know not many artists do, and I, I think it's fantastic. Sure. Now, you, you mentioned um, Teofimo Lopez there, and you, you know, and obviously you you know you've worked with some massive names. I mean, that goes without saying. But I mean, what is it like for you to actually, um, you know, meet some of these some of these stars? I mean, it must be amazing. Do you, do you ever get sort of starstruck, like, oh wow, it's him? Or I mean, what, what's the experience like of, of working with? Because obviously, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And you can list them better than than I can. Yeah, but... I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I, I'm starstruck, but I, but I, but I, I love the you know the fact that I, you know, I, I get that opportunity to meet a lot of the uh, the fighters and. Um, you know, and, and share my work with them, you know. And, you know, they, they I, I, I love it, to be honest with you, and it's a very um, humbling experience to, to get to meet the guys and, and to chat with them, and especially, especially if I painted them and they liked the piece. I mean, the, the last time that happened, obviously, to Teofimo and Crawford. Crawford come up and, you know, we had a really good chat in uh, Madison Square Garden. Again, not in Madison Square Garden, sorry, he was in the Stewart Hotel. And it was quite funny because he liked the piece of the one I'd done of him of versus him and Khan. And a matter of fact, I'm going to show that piece. Uh, him versus Amir Khan. Yeah. And um, no, this isn't the actual piece. This this is a a, a canvas edition of that piece. Um, but, oh yeah. But Crawford loved it, and that's that's signed, that's a canvas edition signed by Crawford and signed by Khan. But he loved it. I think he liked the fact that it was um, obviously with the... Uh, it's a mess in here, look. It's a studio. Uh, I think he loved the fact that with the Madison Square Garden on the top. And anyway, we had a... It was lovely that we had this... It's caught on, it's caught on footage as well on camera. That we had this conversation about how we were, you know, coming up with a deal and how we were going to get it back to his home. So, but the funny thing was, this was before the fight happened. So I'm like saying... I, I said to him, I said something like... Uh, I said, you've got to win the fight first. And all he did, he didn't say anything. He just went, he just, he just looked at me funny as if like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to win. Don't even go there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was nice. It's nice to have that, those moments, you know, and, um, and again, like, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Vegas doing our live one of Tyson versus, and, and versus Tyson and Castamato with Castamato looking down on him. And on the Friday, uh, that Mike was coming in to do a signing session, sort of walks walks past and says, wow, that's my first fight. I mean, he said, who painted this? He said, Mike, it's me. I said, I painted it. He said, man, give me a fist pump and then crushed my hand, shook it, and then said like, wow, that's awesome, man. And then during the weekend, I said, Mike, I said, what color top do you have on? And um, he, he said, oh, it was definitely, it was definitely gray, he said. It was a gray Adidas top. Because he said, I remember, because it was my first fight. So, what was the, I, what I wanted then is, what I wanted, because he signed some, I mean, he signed the original, and I wanted to get some footage, because I wanted to ask him, I wanted it to be on camera, though. I wanted to say, what was your, what was your feeling? I knew what he was feeling. I, I knew, um, press the wrong button, huh? I knew that, um, 
I knew that he was nervous and stuff, but I, I just wanted to know of, that, of him, you know, that particular moment. And he just said he, he was nervous. He just wanted to do well for Kiss. But it was lovely to chat with him about that, you know. And it's not, not very often we get those type of moments with, uh, you know, somebody like Tyson. Yeah, that's incredible. It's incredible just to be up close and, and personal. And it's... Um... Again, it's, it's a little bit off topic, but um, in the past, when, when I've met certain um, big names or whatever, they're not always yeah. what you think either. I mean, um, you know... No, start, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little... Go on, sorry. Oh, no, 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 I, no. Go on, you, you carry on what you're saying. I'm, I'd love to hear. Well, I'll give you a classic example of that. It's a bit away, it's away from box. It's more the UFC, but I was in Vegas and I was doing a live painting of Diaz McGregor 2 for the second fight. And I'm, I'm outside a gallery in uh, Las Vegas in the MGM Grand. And I hear this voice behind me. I'm painting away and I hear this voice. And this voice says, you know when you've made it big when somebody's painting it. So I turn around, right? It's Nick Diaz with his camera. And I go, bloody hell, Nick Diaz. So, uh, so I say, oh, I got, a, I got a surprise for you. So he comes, I said, can you come into the gallery? So he come into the gallery with me and um, I had this, it was the surprise shot, you know, ain't surprised, you know, where he's like that. And it's, yeah. it's, like, it's quite abstract, it's quite uh, very colourful. And, um, and he was like, I said, oh, so it was number, I think I give him number, it was the number of the fight, I think it was, somewhere out to 30, because he had 30, it was his 30th fight. Might have been 30 or 30 or something like that. Um, and he was like, wow, you know, he was like, wow. He said, oh, thanks, man. Thanks so much. I wish I had done it. I wish I had it on camera because he was so, um, you know, he was very humble with it. Nothing like you see him on the camera. Very yeah. down to earth and very uh, thankful. And another person as well, which meant not many people would think, was Mayweather in London. I presented him with a painting of um, Pacquiao and him in a stadium. Right, and when I presented him with our painting, he was in, he was like taken aback. He was like, "Oh wow, you know, thanks, really, th you know, thanks." Like, not 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 like pe many people would think. Oh, another one, you know, give it to his guys. Like, he wasn't like that at all. He was he was really grateful and uh, thankful that he had had this piece. Yeah, and and I think you don't see that enough with uh, some of the guys. No, you don't. I I agree. I mean, that's it's it's funny you should mention that because. Um, when I said just now that they're not like um, what you think, Mayweather was one of the people that I had in mind. Is because I met—I mean, I met him one time um, when I was photographing a, at like a meet and greet that he was doing. And yeah. he, honestly, he was such a nice guy. You know, saying yeah. exactly, exactly the same as what you described, really. And uh, and it was—it was. It was but nice also, what's what's not documented then as well is what these these guys, a lot of these guys, celebrities, and I'll give to charity. It, it ain't documented, and then and a lot of those guys give a lot of money, but they don't yeah. show that. You know, not, oh. I don't know. I don't really know. I'm just. I. I know that a lot of them do give a lot. Mayweather, for one, I know he would give an awful lot. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, there's another thing there. I mean, you. You know, you mentioned uh, obviously New York, and you mentioned Italy, and obviously you've been all over the world. Uh, all over the world with your with your art. I mean, I've seen like you know Saudi Arabia and Los Angeles and Arizona and obviously New York and just so many places, and obviously Vegas. Do you have a favourite place that, that art has taken you or, or do you just sort of enjoy them all? Or I mean, what are your thoughts on, on the travel side of it? I would certainly say it's the... Um, what I would say is a guy, is a guy that uh, I listen to, is a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk, and he says that it's, you know, it's the process and not the outcome. And, and I, really, I really believe that, you know, because even though, like, you know, you take, you know, I could go to Vegas and I could sell a painting, when I look back on it, um, it's that producing the painting, the traveling, going to that place to exhibit that painting, meeting the people, making new friends. And if I get a sale, um, that's a bonus. But all the prior to that is, is to have those memories and stuff is something special. But um, what was your question again? Well, my question was really if there was like a favourite place that, that you've been to. Oh, but... it's got to be Vegas, mate. I, and the only reason why that is, <laughs> it's just, and not because of the party, because I don't, I don't, very rarely that will I, um, 
I know they do to work and to to promote and, and that sort of thing. And but I just love it because you know, every hotel is like a you know, you could stay in a hotel all day. You've been out there in Vegas? No, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, I mean, you, you, well, you, you've got to. I mean, it's, it's, it's very sad to see it as it is at the moment because I think yeah. people are, are struggling and I think it's difficult. It's, it's, it's been hit badly, you know, because obviously none of the, I don't think the, um, the casinos are, are doing very well. Yeah. But um, I, love, I love the aspect of all the, the, the different the different casinos, the different, um, cause there's so much in, in the, in the different ones and the Blasios, they're, they're all so big, you know, um, yeah. you, you walk, you walk a mile to breakfast, you know, um, but they're all so big and there's always so much stuff going on in them. You know, there's always like the MGM Grand, there's always different events going on. I even watched, I even went to watch Tyson's show in, in the MGM Grand and it was in a small, uh, it was in the um, Brad Garrett's Comedy Club Theatre, which yeah. is downstairs in, in the MGM Grand, right? I'm sat, I'm sat in the front. It's a small, it's a small comedy club. And when I say small, it's probably smaller than the one of the Glee Club in Cardiff. So I'm sat there now, right? Tyson's on stage, no more than 10 metres away from me, doing his show. It was a it was brilliant. It was a really good show, and uh, and it was funny to to see that. Um, but yeah, so like, there's there's lots of different uh, things going on all the time. I mean, I I I've been I went to going obviously my I'm 45, so when I was growing up, Lionel Richie was around, and I like I liked his music. <clears throat> so when he was playing in Vegas, I thought, man, I got to go and see Lionel Richie. So I went on my own. So. <clears throat> There's a beauty of going on your own mind. So when I so when I went on my own, um, the lady in the in the front of the door, she goes, uh, "Are you on your own?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Oh well, you lucky night." She said, "There's a gold ticket," and I paid eighty dollars right for my ticket to go and watch Lionel Richie. She ushered me around this. I didn't know where I was going. She ushered me around, got to the front, and I mean the front. Lionel Richie was in front of me. About well, at one point he was like two meters away, um, and I'm and I'm watching Lionel Richie live. So it was just a, a fluke moment that I had just because I went on my own that she gave me, because it was to fill the front row up, I guess. Yeah. Um, that was brilliant, you know. But I also, I also like, I do like, um, I've only been twice, but I went to Saudi Arabia twice and, you know, it's not the same as somewhere like Vegas because you haven't got the things, but that's a, de- that's a real developing country. And that, and that is, um, you know, don't, don't believe a lot of the stuff you hear because you know they are really it in they're it in waves they they're it in you know they yeah. want you to go out there they want you to go and watch the attractions and the concerts and different things that are coming up and yeah. the um you know in my two visits there the um the hospitality has been superb absolutely superb they couldn't do enough for you i've said i've said it a couple of times to different people there's when you haven't got the internet, you get a you get an Uber taxi out there. You haven't got the internet. They they want to put you on there. They'll link you up. They'll link you up on their um, Wi-Fi on their uh, you know um, what they call it. But you know they're so kind and so uh, hospitable that they yeah. can't do enough for you. Yeah. Um, but I, I like every place because every place brings that new opportunities and new uh, new friends. And new um, new possibilities, you know. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And it's interesting saying that actually, because you, you touched on something there earlier on um, about enjoying the process and everything, and and I, and I love that because that's uh, personally it's something I believe in very much, and we're on the same page there. But I I, I love that sort of statement because yeah. obviously the world that we live in, a lot of people are very focused on on sort of the end goal and this that and the other. But it does lead me to something. I mean, obviously, you know all of the, um, you know, all the years that you've been painting, basically, and everything like that, yeah. and all the experience that you've got, how do you sort of stay so positive? And I know you love what you do, but what I mean by that is, obviously, I'm sure it's there's sort of times when, you know, it's going really well, and you're selling a lot of stuff, and there's times when it's, you know, when it's probably not, because, I mean, that's life, isn't it? It's, it's the same in yeah. But how do you sort of stay so sort of, what I mean by that is every time um, I see you on social media or anywhere, you're always sort of 
you know, very upbeat and, and whatnot. How do you sort of keep sort of enjoying the process um, through the ups and downs, basically? I mean, I know that's a funny question. Um, I think that's just the way. I'm a very, you know, placid guy and sort of just, um, uh, you know, I, I think I'm open-minded with stuff. And I think um, I do listen. I listen to a lot of um, positive, uh, uplifting um, podcasts. Um, I listen to a lot of, uh, um, and and that that's something that is, uh, you know, and there's certain sayings that I've 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 often come up well sort of heard, and there's stuff stuff that I've. There's one, and it, and it just, I, I love it. I actually said it a lot of times on different things. Every adversity, every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage or benefit. So we're all going through bad shit and times, but, you know, often if you look at the positive from from it, but that's the problem. Most people, we don't look. We, if we, if we, if something bad happens, we, we just stick at that bad, we're stuck in that bad yeah. vibe instead of thinking, well, and, and I've always thought that. So if I, if I go on exhibit somewhere, and it's happened a lot to me, Liam, you know, people, I often get people saying like, oh, you've got a lovely life or you've got a lovely, you know, you, you've got a, the best job. And I always comment on there. I always say, you only see the good stuff. Yeah. Because that is all the, and that's the thing, that's the, the one thing about the social media side of it is that, what it's done now, especially for youngsters, unfortunately, all, all the youngsters are seeing is, is good stuff. I mean, not, not, every, not, all, or not everybody, I know, but majority of stuff is just good things. Yeah. Um, and we all, we all have crap times, you know, and without, and without doubt throughout, throughout this COVID times, I've, I've been, I haven't been like creating all the time, but I've, I've always been doing something and I'm always thankful and grateful that I have got, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky, you know. I've been so lucky during this COVID time. We spoke earlier on that everything, you know, I, I've, I, I kept selling. Like I said, like every adversity, every failure brings with it the seed of equivalent advantage or benefit. Now, the COVID thing is a bad thing. Now, what was the benefits to come out of that? A lot of people had grants. A lot of pubs had grants. They didn't shut down. A lot of pubs had grants to, to keep going. So they had free money. To, uh, I don't mean it like free money, but they kept going with it. So you know, I looked at the positive side, and one of the positive sides of that for me was that everybody was home. So everybody was online. So I'm sure that everybody kept buying stuff. So, I mean, you know, but I, so I, I don't... I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to be... Um, I had a guy... <laughs> I had a guy, you know, I often have guys saying to me on things, you know, looks rubbish, doesn't look anything like him. And my, my response to that would be, uh, thanks for the positive comment. Have a great day. <laughs> and they had a bit baffled. They're a bit baffled with that response because either they wanted a shit response, they want me to tell them to F off, or they just, they're in, a, they're in, a, they're in such a, a bad place themselves to want to wanna, um, to want to have to leave a comment like that, they must be in a bad, they must be in a bad spot. And the funny thing is, when I leave a response like that, you know, thanks for the positive comment, have a great day. No doubt within, I often get another comment back saying, oh, but I love your work. <laughs> I think it's great. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see the point in, uh, there's too much shit happening in this world to be, uh, you know, to be shitty with people and, uh, to be negative and you yeah, know, absolutely. I don't, I don't see the point of it. Honestly, mate. I mean, again, I, I'm not going to go too into it because it's, it's off topic. But I agree so much with what you said. I mean, even even the idea behind, um, or one of the main ideas at least behind doing like a this video is that sort of inspirational aspect in in, in that way. Because um, I mean, that's why you know the channel that I'm putting this on is called Simply Inspired, you know, because it's oh, it is cool. that, that sort of, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, even, though yeah. I, even though I obviously, like you, boxing is a huge passion of mine and everything, so yeah. a lot of it's around that. It's still around, like, you know, people overcoming things. And because even the fact that you've um, obviously made it very successfully as, as a full-time artist is one of those things where how many people have an artistic 
talent and then people say yeah. to them oh you know there's no money in that blah 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 uh, i mean exactly. i've heard i've had all that about photography and about uh, yeah. because obviously my full-time thing so i've had all of this so I, I know what it's like um well i i love i love that because you know often when you look back when you're growing up and, and everything you look on you know look there's always that comment there's always there's always quotes as well of the starving artist you know there's, there's never there's a lot of artists out there that are millionaires no. alive and yeah. i'm not but, but there's a lot of people who are alive and they're doing extremely well um but unfortunately due to past um throughout the years of you know and that's that's a stigma that artists will have you know the the uh, the starving artist it is a stigma you know and until you flip that, you've got to flip that and, you know, totally flip it and, you know, and, 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 be, and it becomes irrelevant. You know, um, you, you can do what you want to do. You can sell your work for whatever price you want to sell. You, you can sell your work for what you want to sell it for. Not, you know, not, not like, um, you know, I think there's a, Certainly, there is a a stigma out there, as I said, you know, and and it does. Unfortunately, a lot of people follow that, yeah, and it gets stuck in that mentality of it, you know. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, but it's, it's interesting, and, and that's one of the things, you know. And, and I, I love that. I just love that inspirational aspect of it, really, which obviously does um, lead on to something else that, that I've sort of been looking forward to asking you is, in terms of. Um, uh, how do I put this over now? So say if somebody's watching this and they've got sort of yeah. a creative talent or they yeah. want to get into art or they want to get into some form of uh, creative process or whatever. Yeah. I mean, what sort of advice would you give um, to them? And the reason I ask that is obviously, you know, you're, you're very successful, very inspirational in what you do. Um, so say if there's somebody who wants to, you know, get into art full time, they've got a creative talent, they don't know where to put it or whatever, uh, yeah. any, anything like that. I mean, and again, I know it's a funny one, but what sort of advice would you give? Because I think no, it's not funny at all. It's a good question because I I, I often get asked about things, and I, and I, to be honest, Lee, I'm mean, quite surprised sometimes with some things I'm asked, and I think I take it for granted that a lot of things I'm asked, I'm a little bit, I take it for granted that I know it, or that I'm surprised at even asking me it because there's a thing now called Google, and. <laughs> And I'm very surprised sometimes because things that they ask me that is it's it's so it's so out there now. When I was growing up, it wasn't out there. Um, you know, we we didn't have the, I didn't have the internet when I left college in '95. Well, I, I think it was there, but it wasn't it wasn't like it is now. Um, and I can remember I can remember typing letters to publishers on a word processor. Yeah. And my word processor would print it out, and I'd send it off and whatever. But it's so much easier now. But in relation to like saying about <clears throat> what I would say is if, if there's art, if there's people out there who are very creative, unfortunately fear, fear is a massive thing so, and, and fear. And again, I take it for granted that I never really had this, but a lot of people have got it. I know they've got it because I've, I've heard people, they've asked me about advice and different stuff. And I'm very surprised that fear does hold people back from doing a lot of things. And, especially if they're creative and, they, and, they, and the fear of rejection, the fear of um, being, being told that it's rubbish or being told, but it, they, they, they might not think it's rubbish and there's, another, and there's another thousands or millions of people out there that wouldn't think it's rubbish either. The problem is fear of what other people think. You yeah. know, it's the fear of that. It's the fear of having a, a bad, and we spoke about it earlier, and my response to it to some people. And I think that thing that I've said to a lot of people that have asked me, you know, the first, you know, they've, they, they've messaged me and said, I'm interested in, you know, doing prints of my stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I do, but I don't know where to start. I said, well, you work online? No. Is your work on Facebook? No. Is your work on this? No. Well, the first thing you've got to do is get, let people see it. Mm. And don't worry about the response because I think you'll be surprised, you know? And then once they've go through that fear of uh, somebody saying that it's rubbish, because they, what, what's, what does it matter? You know, 
what does it matter if somebody says it's rubbish? Because the next person is going to say it's great. Yeah. And then, and then once you get through that, you know, you, you, you do the next thing and then the next thing. But, then, but I would also say, you know, for me, what which worked for me was I worked, I worked myself full time for a long time before I was in a position to be able to, um, and I didn't even know I was in a position then, but it just, it just happened that I was made redundant. And it was, it was, the, it was a good call for me. It was, uh, I was blessed that it happened, to be honest. Again, every adversity, every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. That redundancy for me, even though it was a bad thing, what was the positives that I could take out of it? The positives for me was that I could concentrate on a full-time career. Concentrate on, you know, how can I do this? You know, how can I do it full-time? And, I mean, there's loads of things that you can talk about that, really. And, and you know, it's, it, I, I was having a good chat with Ella Crystal about it uh, and the mindset of doing that full-time. And, and um, being able to, uh, because going from a full-time wage, working at, you know, and having a good wage, for a monthly income coming in, how do you then all of a sudden, that's taken away from you, and you've got to make, uh, you've got to make a living. So you've got to have the, the right mindset to think, right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make enough money, how can I make enough money to, you know, pay my bills and, and everything else? And it, and, it, and it isn't easy. But I think you just take everything, you take everything, you know, in, in your sort of your stride. You take everything as it comes, bit by bit. Like I said, first you've got to put your work out there. Yeah. And then, and then, because I've had messages off people, I, I'm thinking of put it, doing my work as prints, blah, blah, blah. How do I, how do I get, how do I, how do I get my work done as prints? Uh, again, there's, there's a thing called Google. Mm. But, you know, the first thing I would say to them is like, well, are you showing your work anywhere? No. <laughs> well, before you do things, that, before you, or, you know, before you put your stuff into print or before you even develop a website, because I've had people say, oh, I'm thinking of developing a website to sell my stuff. And the first, the first thing I say to people there is, look, you know, a website is just a presence. You know, mm. you can sell your stuff on a lot of other things. And before you spend money or, you know, get a website, uh, think about, you know, put your stuff out there first and see if people want to buy it. Yeah. You know? So what do you say that that's really key? Because what's interesting is one of my other questions, which we sort of sort of covered in a way, is obviously about how well you've mastered the business side of, of that now, well, well, I, I like the I like the words, mate. Oh, well, I mastered it. I, I haven't mastered it, but it's it's still a work in progress. Yeah, well, that's, um, that's life. But but what I mean is, though, think about it this way: like when I talk with different fighters, different boxers, and I talk to them, you, you know, you'll find that some are very sort of that you know they've got a better business head on, and some of them are more from the point of view of sort of you know I'll fight anyone anywhere and all that type of thing and it and I'm not saying there's a wrong or right but I'm just saying that some people in terms of you know in terms of the financial um, success at least obviously have a better mindset so and it's the same thing for yourself is obviously I, yeah. I just find it interesting how you've okay it's a work in progress that's that's cool but how you've sort of developed a lot of the, um, the, the you know the business side of it but it sounds like from what you're saying that a lot of the um, one of the fundamentals of that is just getting yourself out there which is um, yeah, I think so. I, I really, I really do think that. I, I, I think it is getting yourself out there because once you get, once you have a positive, you can have a negative um, response of somebody, but once you have that positive response and it lifts you that little bit, you then, once you get that, once you have the positive thing that lifts you, and then you, 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 you sort of got this. You're inspired to do something else or put something else up because you've had a positive. You know, and it's just beginning. It's just starting that. Yeah. You know, luckily we've we've been around when you think about it with the likes of um, the likes of uh, social media now. I mean, I've been around since it was MySpace. Yeah, yeah. Remember MySpace, uh, which was no. the start, which was the start of really the, the sort of the beginning of Facebook. Really, it wasn't Facebook, but it was like the similar sort of thing. But um, yeah, I think that is a. <clears throat> a real 
you know, that's the thing is putting yourself out there first because it's all free. I mean, I remember talking to somebody not long back and she didn't have, I don't think she had anything on uh, her Facebook. She had a Facebook account, but she didn't have anything on it. Of her artwork, she didn't have. And I'm like thinking to myself, well, are you going to bloody sell it if nobody sees it? And there's a really good, um, I listen to a guy who something called Grant Cardone. So Grant Cardone is a more of a business um, real estate guy, but he um, he's a good he's good in what he's saying, right? Because he was saying that you know, for, uh, like he's saying if you're saying things like Twitter and different stuff, if you're not known, you're not going to sell anything. Mm. So you need to be known in the, to be able to sell something in the first place. So you know, you need to have your work out there. Um, and, and being and being seen, you know. I, I do understand the the principle. It, it's just it's marvelous for people to hear it because, you know, for people watching this because there are so well, many. Again, like I said, I, I just I said I, I I took it for granted that people yeah. didn't, you know, don't and I and I like the fact that I can inspire somebody to, um, um, you know, go ahead and and put their work out there. Yeah. And I tell you, no, and honest, honestly, Liam, there's a hell of a lot of good artists out there. There was some good artists when I was in university or, you know, there was some, and you don't have to go to uni to, to be a good artist. You know, I, I'm just saying that when I was in, there was some good artists there, but they never did anything with it. Yeah. They never did it. They never went on and, and continued to, to pursue that, that dream or that uh, creative streak in them. Yeah. They just, uh, they just left it. And um, going back to that, there's a brilliant saying, there's a brilliant quote by a guy called, uh, um, it'll come to me now. Oh, for goodness sake. What's his name? Anyway, his quote is, the richest place on earth is the graveyard. Oh, that's, all, um, that's all the, Les Brown, that is. I don't, Les sorry, Brown, I, I interrupted you. Sorry, all, sorry. All the, um, all the artwork that wasn't created, all the music that wasn't written, all the books that one written, you know, everything. You think about it because some people were that little bit, you know, fearful of putting something out there. And again, it goes back to that, you know, nobody really gives a shit of you, me, anybody else. Because once we, like, uh, like Gary, that Vaynerchuk, Gary V says this all the time, you know, somebody famous like Michael Jackson. They, they, I know they're, like, they're still out there with the music and stuff, but once they die, you know, it's like they, people mourn for like a week or a couple of days, not even a week, a couple of days. And then it's, that's it. It's forgotten about. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we all worry about these certain things in, in, that we do and about getting embarrassed about something. And the reality is that nobody really gives a shit about, you know, about everything. Um, but it's, uh, it's it's just having that thing in there of um, of going for it, like putting your putting your stuff stuff there. And like you said, I mean, I like to think that, and this is another one by Les Brown, and he says that when you're on your deathbed, when you're on your deathbed, and all your talents are around your bed, and they say yeah. like, why didn't why didn't you use me? Why didn't you use me? I was given to you. And it didn't use me. Imagine if I was reality, like you're letting your deathbed now happens. That'd be crazy. But, um, I, I agree. I mean, I've, I've always, I, those, in, in fact, actually those, specifically those two um, quotes or, or whatever, are things that I've actually put on social media in the past several, you know, yeah. a whole bunch of times. Because I, I believe, well, we're on the same page there, my friend, honestly. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, there we go. Fantastic. So moving on from that side of it, um, I mean, I've only got a few more questions anyway, but moving right. on from that side of it, um, one of the things that I really, really like about what you do is obviously some of the um, charity side of things that you do uh, right. or that you've done over time and that sort of giving back sort of sort of quality. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, in terms of that, uh, again, it, it, again, it's a funny one because it's not really a specific question about what about this, that and the other, but in terms of the um, charity side of things, that giving back is obviously um, something that, you know, that means something to you. What are your thoughts on, on that side of things? Because that's something that you've been involved with some fantastic charity work. I mean, I know raising 
uh, was it was it six grand? Was it for Make a Wish and uh, different amounts? I've seen different. Yeah, things. we've done we've done a few things with Make a Wish over the years, um, and uh, the Amelia May Foundation uh, Children's Cancer Charity. But uh, I, I have to give a shout out there to a guy called Neil, Mister Bookatz. Uh, he was like uh, acted as an agent for me for uh, he still does um, in London, and um, he's. Uh, He's a very he's a, he's done very well for himself as a a property developer. So he was on a lot of uh, um, charity um, committee meetings, different things, and he would put my name forward um, for uh, doing a lot of different things. And um, that's how some of them came off. But um, the one, I mean, yeah, it's nice to be able to do that. Like you said, to be able to give something back with the talent they have. You know, yeah. It well, yeah. Nice. It nice. Yeah, it's just it's just something it's just something nice to touch on. I just I didn't want to leave that out because it's it's the same thing as what you're saying earlier. I mean, you know, life life is short at the end of the day, so giving something back is is a nice thing. So I just wanted to touch on it. Yeah, I sure. got, I've only got a couple more um, a couple more things really. And one of them is um, I suppose in some ways it's probably an obvious one, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. it, do you have um, favourites of your paintings? Do you have ones that, that you, or do you, because I know that obviously um, it's probably a bit like when I take a photograph or something, and something yeah. like there's, there's things where other people think it's great and I don't, yeah. or, or vice versa or whatever. But yeah. do you have personal favourites or do you just sort of um, sort of not worry about it and put, put it out there? Um, I do, I, it's a funny one really, because sometimes, you know, um, Sometimes I might have a a favourite one, as in like, because it might be simple but very effective, and 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 I and I sort of push the boundaries for myself because it goes back to the style that I like changing a style. Because when you're an artist and you're growing up with being an artist, you're trying to copy something to the best of your ability, and then as you progress as an artist, you um you try to uh, break the mould, you try to come out of that box a little bit and try and um, do something a little different and and sometimes that's when you do that then you, you I, I, I can be more pleased by doing something like that than doing something that looks technically brilliant so I mean for me there's a there's a taste and peace which um, it's actually the one that is a he signed it's not the one with, with a, the montage piece which is very technically very good it's the one which is more very simple and it's him throwing the hook of a burbick, but it's got a streak of red down the side. But it's such a simple, um, it was such a simple, but it was very striking because of the light. And the very important part of capturing people and, and uh, portraits is the light. If you get the right light in a, and the same with the photographs, if you get the right light in a, in a shot, it works because the shadows and everything, the form and the contrast and everything work, work well. Um, you know, if you if you can get that, and it was just that's one of my I do like that painting, but but also I would say that probably the fight in Irishmen, because that painting was um, it was my it was first big mission from a company in New York, and um, you know it was a, it was a big one for me because even though I was still working in the school at the time, um, it was one that uh, you know the school at the time actually granted me a leave to actually attend the exhibition in New York um, in the Irish Arts Centre in um, in New York and um, it was a brilliant it was a brilliant piece for me because that exhibition which probably still not many people know about it because you know the social media then still wasn't around like it is now and that was 2005 that I was commissioned or 2006 that if, if officially let this took off the fight in Irish men exhibition. It was Irish and Irish American fighters, the um how it came together, the history of it, and how the Irish sort of flee to America to bet themselves. And it was a a painting, a five foot painting by I thought I had printed it somewhere, five foot by three and a half feet. And it includes forty seven fighters and it was an oil painting. And to have that when you went when you went to the the main exhibit in in New York, and then it went to Boston University, and it went to South Seaport Museum in New York, 
it flew it went not just my painting mind i'm talking about the old exhibit like like john uh jake Kil- are you there jake yeah. kilrain's jake kilrain's uh fur coat uh you know things like that it, it was an amazing experience and um for that to be one of the center of attention of that painting and it was, it was commissioned by an american real estate com- company I look back on that now and think, oh, shit, I could have charged twice the price. But it's just one of those things. Again, it goes back. It wasn't about the money and as, 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 as such. It was, it was more about the process. Because that, from that event happening in 2006, it travelled it traveled around the world up to 2013. And, you know, it created a lot of uh, events for me. To, I was invited to all the events. Um, but again, because social media wasn't massive at the time but you can still you can still see that um it's on youtube and if you type in the fight in irish men you'll see um some really good footage of the of the exhibits and um also there's a good website as well um so yes yeah, so that, that was probably my favorite because it was a big starting point for me fantastic yeah. It's fantastic just to hear the story behind it because I, I've seen the I've seen the picture. Um, I'll have a look at the YouTube side of it, but um, it's it's fantastic to hear the you know the the story behind it because um, yeah. funny enough that's actually that's actually another one of the um, uh, which is it's another favourite of mine personally. Again and again that's off to, a little bit off topic, but I, it's just because I really like the sort of um, meaning behind it. The, you know some of the historical side of it with the, with the Irish and having some yeah. Irish heritage myself, maybe I don't know. Maybe that draws me to it or something. But it's just a fantastic, uh, fantastic piece of work. Now I've only got a couple more, um, a couple more things. One of them is obviously um, future plans because I know we've talked a lot about sort of things that have happened, um, you know, in the past happened formally. But obviously going from here, and I know as that's a funny one because the future is a bit up in the air at the moment. Yeah. Um, for for all of us. But I mean, what sort of Obviously, you've uh, you've shown me that you know the Gypsy King that you're working on, and that's that's coming along nicely there by the look of it. But what sort of future plans, ambitions do you have? Maybe it's not a specific painting, maybe it's an exhibit, maybe it's just I don't know. I mean, what's what's sort of on the horizon for you, really? Well, I want to keep exhibiting. I want to sell. You know, my aspirations really keep selling around the world. Um, keep exhibiting, um, and just keep producing. Really, you know, and. Uh, I think I'd like to do more MMA stuff, more UFC stuff. I would like to do more of that. But, um, you know, I, I enjoy, I got a really good commission, another good commission from um, Bayless and Arden, the owners. Um, I've done a piece for them before and I've got to do uh, something else. So that's really good. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just, just plodding away, mate, with, uh, with pieces and, uh, just, just keeping creative, really, keeping going, and just keep producing, and, and keep, and, and and enjoying people buying my work and loving my work, you know. And and, and it's nice that uh, I got certain collectors out there. Uh, I got collectors out in uh, Texas and different places, which is which is nice. Um, and I think this, I'm not sure what's happening with this piece. I hope. Um, I think there's a a, a guy in. Um, Texas might like it. These are a few. Okay. Um, but we'll see what um, what happens. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm still... Uh, regards, I'm not sure how long it's going to be until we can travel again. Uh, but until then, I'm just going to be, you know, working from my studio here and uh, thing, things are all good anyway. Yeah. Oh, good, good. It's, it's just an insight because it's, it's it's interesting to sort of hear about how you've sort of continued during the, the you know these these funny times but uh yeah the, the last question i have really um is actually more of a boxing one than, than, a, than a painting one really yeah it's, i've got to ask you about favorite um fighters and, and by that and I, I touched on this at the beginning but i i by that i only mean um fighters that you want yeah, yeah. To watch, yeah. um well i i don't see this because he's from you you know and uh but I, I do like Joe. I, I did like Joe in the fact that I, I like that he came from a, that shed in Newbridge and and what he what he done, you know. Um, I just love that aspect of it, and and I and I like the fact that he could fight and he could box. 
I did like that. He was he was a hard. You wouldn't think it by looking at him, you know, but he was a hard man, you know. Um, but I, I, but that's like you know old. But I love Tyson. I love growing up with Tyson. He's a big inspiration for me, and um, and I love Lomachenko at the moment, and I and, and Teofimo Lopez, and I think uh, Belanga needs a shout out as well. Fourteen fights, fourteen knockouts. Um, and there could be a there's a painting in the pipeline because um, they've asked me, they've asked me a couple of times. And actually, Belanga walked past me in New York and he went to me the one day. He went, "You'll be painting me soon," <laughs> as he walked past me. Uh, so we we have I got some at, uh, in line with their team, and um, I'm in the process of uh, I got an idea that I'm like doing something, but yeah, um, yeah. brilliant. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's that's everything that I wanted to ask in terms of um, that. And oh, it's I, great, man. It's nice, uh, nice chat. Yeah, the same. Yeah, same here. And it's good actually because um, one of the things is that you, you know some of the questions you know you answer without me even asking. Um, yeah, yeah. That, which, is, which is a good thing. And there's other ones that, that sort of popped up there that were sort of on the fly. So it's it's good, but it's, it's a really good insight into it. And and I hope that it's it's something a little bit different than. Um, in, in, at least in some ways, and um, some of the sort of art interviews that you see um, yeah. you can follow certain formats and whatnot. Um, before we wrap it up, is there anything you're holding on to, anything you'd like to say to like people watching this or anything at all like that, or are you all good? I'm all good, but if there's anybody creative out there and they're like a bit worried about putting stuff out there, <laughs> they just got to put stuff out there. Yeah. Or if, they, if, they, if there's anybody who wants a bit of advice on anything, Send me a message. I'm always uh, happy to um, give some advice to people. Excellent. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said at the beginning, um, thank you, you know, thank you again for your time. I do appreciate that. Welcome. Brilliant. Well, I, I'm going to leave you to to crack on with the uh, with the Gypsy King. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I say, thank you again, and uh, and I'll be in See touch you, very soon. Enjoyed okay? it. Nice yeah. one, mate. Enjoyed it Cheers. as well. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.